As we approach Election Day, you're probably wondering if you're registered to vote. Uh, where do you vote? What happens if you're not available on Election Day? Do you need an absentee ballot? How do you get one? And then, of course, there's the bigger question. For whom do I vote? If you think about these issues, and you do, you're not alone. There are lots of confusion out there. In this pre-election series, I'll be talking with knowledgeable individuals who will help us sort things out. I'm Alice Bloom. Welcome back. My first guest in our series is Ashton Stewart, who's executive director of the New York City League of Women Voters. Ashton, thanks for being with me today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. It really is. And I know this is an extremely busy time for you. Right. Is, What's the yes. countdown to the election as we take today on October November 10th? November 6th is the, the election day. And Friday, the 12th of October, is the registration deadline. So yes, it's, it's been a very busy time for us trying to get the last uh, few voters registered. And, and now we're putting together the voter guide for the election. So okay. yes, we're, we're really busy. Lots going on. Are people perplexed this year about whether they're registered to vote? There is a, a little confusion. Um, mostly because there's a lot of states that are having identification requirement issues. Right. Um, New York State, fortunately, isn't one of them. But uh, the residual effects, of course, are uh, concerned voters contacting the League of Women Voters to find out and make sure that they are registered. Okay. And we always encourage people to follow up on that. Okay, that so if somebody's concern. at home and, and doesn't know if they're registered, mm -hmm. can they do? Can they find out if they're registered on their own without calling the League of Women Voters? They certainly can. Um, they can go to our website. Uh, we have a voter registration information page um, that has a, a number of links at the top. Um, one of them is a poll site locator. The other is voter registration status, which actually is a link to the State Board of Elections voter registration status um, uh, website. They just put in their last name, first name, date of birth, uh, the county they reside in, their zip code, and they will find out exactly uh, whether or not they are enrolled uh, currently and what party they're enrolled with. Um, and if anybody has a problem with the website or you know doesn't have a computer, that we always welcome to call us. We have a telephone information service that's available Monday through Friday, uh, 10 o'clock to 4 p.m. Now, you, do you need to be registered with a party to vote? Absolutely not. Um, you do if you want to vote in a primary. Uh, New York state law is defined as uh, you have to be enrolled in the party that is holding the primary. Um, for instance, this past September there was a number of primaries, uh, some Democratic, some Republican. I believe there was one working families um, and a conservative primary as well. So. Each of those primaries, uh, the voter would need to be enrolled in that party. Um, the other important piece of information regarding that is that you have to make sure you're enrolled the year prior to the primary. So for instance, if you want to change your enrollment during the, the election year, um, you would have to wait till the following year in order to vote in that primary. Okay, for but to vote party. in the general election, which is coming up on November 6th, vote for president, um, we have numerous local elections as yes. well. We're yes. going to be broadcasting in Westchester and in New York. In New York City, there are lots of lo local elections. If you're not registered with the party, that will not deter you. That is correct. You, you do not have to be enrolled in any party, and uh, it's totally open for the general elections in New York State. Great. Now, who is a qualified voter? Anybody that meets the criteria uh, defined by the New York State Board of Elections, which includes uh, citizenship, um, having lived in New York for at least 30 days. And 30 days prior to the election. Okay. Oh, no, just 30 days, period, um, to, to get your voter registration um, in New York State. Uh, you have to have lived here for 30 days. A lot of people have moved from other states or, you know. Uh, um, so if you didn't register by October 12, which you said is the last day to register, if you hadn't lived in New York for 30 days and hadn't registered, you're not going to be able to vote that in this is election. Correct. Okay. So you have to be 18 and you have to be a citizen. Mm -hmm. So if you have a green card, can you vote? No, you cannot. If you're in the armed services, can you vote? You can if you uh, have a, a citizenship. Um, there's a lot of uh, military um, personnel who have green card status, the resident alien status. Um, I happened to be one of them way back when, um, but I am you know, a citizen now, but so you have to be a citizen still. That's to, a requirement. To vote. Yes. If you were ever convicted felon, can you vote? You, as long as you are not incarcerated or on parole, you can vote. 
Okay. But if you are, um, and if you are in prison, but it's not a felony, you can vote from from prison as well. Okay. If you are 18 by election day, can you vote? Yes, you can register early. And as a matter of fact, if you are going to be 18 by December 31st of any year, you can uh, you can register, but you won't be able to vote and until you, you hit your 18th birthday, so you would have to wait to the next year, but at least the registration part of it will be done already. So all our high school seniors who are 17 can register to vote and just wait till they turn 18 That's to correct. actually vote, but they can get a leg up and get the paperwork done. Sure, yes, and we encourage that. Uh, we do a lot of voter registration at schools throughout the city, the five boroughs, and uh, we encourage that. Okay, so, and you told us how we find out where we vote. We can go to the website, to the League of Women Voters website, and through the links, find out by putting in your zip code, your address, you can find out exactly where your polling place is. Yes. Okay, people show up on election day, show up to vote, and they're not in the book. What happens? That is uh, an infrequent problem. Um, usually it has to do with a voter who hasn't notified the Board of Elections that they have a new address. Um, what we encourage voters to do if they haven't um, updated their new address with the Board of Elections is to go to the poll site assigned to their new residence and as they're not on the, the rolls they will have to request an affidavit ballot and they'll fill out the envelope which will serve as an update to the voter registration status and then their ballot will count provided that they are at the correct poll site assigned to the new address. Um, uh, that is the, the most foolproof way to take care of that situation. Okay, and that vote will count? It will, again, provided they're at the right poll site assigned to the new address. Okay. Because if they, if they do go to a poll site that, for, for whatever reason, may be associated with their prior address, or just not the poll site assigned to the new address, um, the envelope will serve as an update to the voter registration status and their, their ballot will not be counted. Okay, that would be devastating. It could be, yes. Some of us. Okay, yeah. now you told us that in New York you do not need an ID to vote. You do not. Um, when you fill out the voter registration form, um, it does ask for either your last four digits of your social security number or um, the last four digits off your identification to the Department of Motor Vehicles or your driver's license. Um, if a voter does not have that information, they can leave it blank. However, when they go to the poll site, um, the poll worker will ask them for uh, a utility bill or a cell phone bill, something that shows their name and the address where they currently reside. That, that means if somebody didn't have your social security number, or your, your driver's license number when you registered, then right. you would be asked for that information. You would, but the other way to avoid that is when you fill, fill out your voter registration form and you have to leave that information blank, you can just make a copy of one of your utility bills and submit it along with the voter registration form and that will count and that will serve the same purpose. Do you think that people should just be, just have such a bill with them when they go to vote? Um, if they haven't provided the last four digits of either a social security number or DMV card, then yes, definitely. Um, but again, if they don't have that information and they're at the poll site, they could still request an affidavit ballot. Okay. Um, there's a bit of a gray area whether you know it's, it's done properly or, um, by the voter if they're at the right poll site. Again, you have to be at the right poll site assigned to the new address. Right. But most of us have so many things going on in our lives. You may have thought you registered, or maybe there was an error and it didn't come to you, come back to you. So you want to make sure that if you're making that effort to get to the poll site, that your vote will count. So either have your utility bill with you or demand an affidavit ballot. Yes, and again, uh, it's if anybody isn't clear on where they're registered to vote or if they aren't clear whether or not they are or aren't registered, they should definitely follow through with that assumption to make sure. Um, we're here to serve that question. Uh, it's, it's out voters out uh, to find out whether or not they are registered before election day because it's always good to take care of these matters beforehand. Okay, give us the phone number now, even though we'll sure. have it on the screen later. You bet. It's 212-725-3541 and our website is LWVNYC, which stands for League of Women Voters New York City. Org. When you're voting, are we using optical scanners again this year? Yes, we are. Okay, yes, it's so a it's new system. We were one of the we were the last state to implement the the new system required by the federal law. But yes, um, and this will be the first um, 
general election that uses the flash drives to do the early reporting rather than filling out the, the pieces of paper and writing them on the return of Canvas, which is a much more efficient way to do the early voting. Something uh, that, that I'm not sure I understand you. Early voting. We vote on November 6th. Early reporting. Early voting. reporting. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Early because reporting. there are some states that have early voting where people can yes. cast their ballot prior to the election day. New York does not have that. New York does not. We've got one big day, November yes. 6th. Right. Okay, so the reporting really doesn't concern individual voters, right? I mean, we're going to be filling out the paper ballot, which is going to be scanned through the optical scanner. Yes. Okay. And then the information will be transmitted to the Board of Elections? Well, the information will be saved in a, a memory drive okay. inside the, the optical scanner, and then that will be given to the, the police department who takes that information to have an early report on the election results. Okay. Prior to that, not, not to complicate things too much, but they had a return of Canvas, which was this huge piece of paper that they would uh, hand write based on little pieces of uh, paper that came out of the machine to to report the early numbers. Right, and election. that was the delay last yeah, election. Yeah, and, and it was it was always a, a little trickier to, to have an accurate report when, when you have so many steps and it's it's all done by paper and pen. Okay. So. You made it out, you said, oh, no, I filled in the wrong spot. You can say, tear this up, I want another ballot. Yes, go to, if you do make an incorrect entry on your ballot, just let the poll worker know and they'll give you another ballot to fill out. Okay, good. So we know we, we have that right. If you need help voting, if you have a disability, can you get help at the polling place or must you have requested that help before? They are, um, they have a ballot marking device available at poll sites, which uh, will serve um, uh, people that are hearing impaired, visually impaired. Um, any type of assistance they may need is provided through the ballot marking device. So, but you can go to your polling place and request assistance yes, if you have each an impairment. Yes, poll site is supposed to be equipped with a ballot marking device and also be accessible by uh, a wheelchair accessible building. Okay. My point is you don't have to make prior um, connections or arrangements. No, you do not. Absentee voting. Not everybody is available between the hours of 6 and 9 on November 6. Sometimes work calls you away, other, other things. What do you do to vote by mail? Do an there is an ballot. absentee ballot application that can be filled out and submitted to the Board of Elections in the borough where you reside. And the deadline for submitting that application is the 30th of October for the general election. And uh, again, that's available through links on our website. They can call us. Uh, we'll also send it out to people. But you have to apply for the absentee ballot, which then gets mailed to you. Correct. Okay. If you didn't know you were going to be away November 6th, are you out of luck? Uh, if you've missed the deadline, yes. Okay. Unfortunately. So someone who thinks that they might have to travel or there might be an issue should request an absentee ballot if, application. Yes, if, if a voter is pretty certain they're not going to be in town for election day, then yes, by all means request an absentee ballot. If you ballot. request the absentee ballot and then you are available to vote, can you, what will happen, and you've sent in the absentee ballot. You would need to submit your application by October 30 and when does the absentee ballot have to be filed by? It has to be filed um, by the 5th, as far as the day before the, the day election. before the election has to be postmarked, or you can hand deliver it up until the 6th. Okay, so presumably if you could hand deliver it, you could also vote. Right, um, at the poll site. Right. right, but um, again, I think that's to serve people that, like you're asking about, if, if they thought they were going to be out of town, they got the ballot and then realize that they're still in town, they can still go ahead and return that ballot to they the can, Board of Elections. They can just use that absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. What's early voting? Early voting um, is not something New York State has. So um, some states do have early voting. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's not something we have here. OK, do you think it's a good idea? I think any. Uh, way to serve the voter is a, a good idea. If, if you can have early voting for people that aren't going to be here, you wouldn't have to go through the whole absentee ballot process. Less paperwork, less mailing. Um, is there any talk of implementing early voting in New York? Um, not that I'm aware of. See, that's a state issue. Mm -hmm. 
we're, we're the City League of Women Voters, and we do work with the National and the State League as well. But uh, some of these these bigger issues are handled by the State League of Women Voters or National, depending on, on the case. Do you think that early voting increases the participation in voting? I have not done, I haven't looked at the research. Um, but again, I would say that any way that the, the Board of Elections in any state can make it easier for the voter, I think it probably would make it uh, have a higher result. Okay. We often hear about people who cast their votes after a debate or after a particular incident, and then they've missed other information that happens after they've already cast their their votes. And I've always wondered, you know, what the sentiment was in the states where they have early voting, whether mm -hmm. that was a good thing or not. Um, we spent some time in Oregon, and I know they they've had voting by mail for years, and claim that there's really been no problem with it. People can, there are certain boxes where people drop their votes, and I think that it goes on for about a month before the actual election. Mm. So there's lots to study about different ways to vote. There's not just one way of voting. That's true. That's very true. And, and you know, I can see how that might impact uh, somebody's decision after the fact, after they see another debate. Mm. But I think voters who, especially early voters, would have a good sense of who they want. Of who they want to vote. They wouldn't have cast their vote early exactly. if they were on the fence. Okay, right. let's talk about some more substantive issues. I think we've covered a lot of the mechanics of voting and given people some really good tools. One of the questions I am frequently asked is, oh, how can I vote? I, I don't like the candidates. What do you say to people who say that to you? Well, um, that's, it's, you know, it's one of those things. If, if a voter really has evaluated the candidates and decides that they don't like the candidates, that's understandable. We want people to vote. Um, it, it's something that the league prides itself on. We, we try to give the resources and the tools to voters to, to let them know, first, there is an election, and second, here are the candidates that will be on your ballot. What are good sources for people to go to? Let me back up. Do you think, or does the league think, that you have to like a candidate for that candidate to merit your vote? Like, Do you want to have dinner with that candidate? <laughs> well, that's a good question and, and, and an interesting way of looking at it. Um, I think that if a voter is comfortable having a candidate over to dinner, they should also consider their neighborhood and community and, and how everybody would feel. Um, I think candidates, voting, elections, it all comes down to resources at home, whether it's in your home, your community, just your neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's a whole package. Um, well, I guess what I'm getting at is what are the important criteria that a voter should use for vetting a candidate? Should you look at a candidate's credentials, um, degrees, past work experience, other offices held, or should you look at emotional things? I like I like the way that person looks, or I like the, I, I'd like to have a drink with that person. Um, well, it's, first, you know, it's, it's up to the voter, um, and that's the whole freedom of voting, is, is it's an individual decision. Um, you can look at different ways of evaluating criteria, and, and we try our best to provide that information to the voter. We have a voter guide. Um, we use vote411.org, which allows the voter to type in their address, and you will see exactly who's going to be on your ballot. And not only that, uh, we invite all candidates involved in New York City elections to provide us with their, their photograph, campaign website information, answer a few short questions. Um, and they all answer the same questions. They do. Um, depending on the, the election, we usually ask for either a campaign statement or responses to uh, like an environmental question or a campaign finance question, something that's relevant to that particular um, position, whether it's state assembly, state senate, city council. Um, Do you give any advantage or any help to a challenger when an incumbent or longtime incumbent is on the ballot as well? We are completely nonpartisan, so we give an equal playing field to all candidates for all races. Um, but again, we, we do pride ourselves to, to give these tools to the voter um, so they can also see where the campaign website is. So they can go and look at the candidate's website to see what issues they support. Um, if it's an incumbent, they can see what legislation they have either introduced or supported. Um, so that way they can uh, uh, really get a good sound decision about 
what candidate fits their mold and their idea of what makes a suitable representative. I guess my, my question is that an incumbent has more of a track record because you can find out how that person really voted on particular issues. That's true. Whereas a challenger, of course, can say what he or she will do, but you don't necessarily know it. So I'm looking for tools that a voter can use to get hard facts about a candidate. The best source for hard facts is to use Vote 401 and go to the campaign website for that particular candidate um, and find out what issues they support. Um, and sometimes a phone call is also necessary phone call to? to the campaign, uh, to the candidate's campaign. Anybody could call the campaign headquarters? Sure, absolutely. That's, okay. what, that's another reason that we put the voter guide together is so that way voters can really uh, do their research. Um, we are here to help out and, and get the, the ball rolling. Um, but it, there is a bit of responsibility up to the voter. Um, they can also talk to their neighbors, talk to their family to get a better sense of what issues are important at home um, and in their communities. So that way they can also hear different opinions that might uh, align with theirs and they might be different. But it's always good to, to get the, this dialogue going mm -hmm. to, to really get a good sound decision and, and have a confident uh, selection when you go to the polls. And so. We, we got our voter guides as ready as soon as possible. Usually, it's Are they ready now? They are not. Um, the City Board of Elections uh, just released their, their official candidate list for the November election. Um, we generally have our voter guides ready about a week before the election. Um, we can let voters know who will be on a ballot prior to that, but it, it takes uh, some time. Uh, we always have hundreds of candidates to, to invite to participate. There's always the, the follow-up uh, to, to encourage all candidates to participate.